Your attention is drawn to the residence of the Brockman clan, an ancient mansion, its paneled walls polished by darkness, a lightless, soundless place upon which a greater darkness has fallen. The object of the Death Watch, Selina Brockman, grand dam of the menagerie who lies in her bed in an inch by inch battle with death, trying somehow to reach a compromise instead of a capitulation. What is your prognosis, Doctor? Take two of these every four hours to relieve the pain. If it gets any worse, call me. You come tomorrow. Yes. Yes, of course. You didn't answer my question. How is dear Aunt Selina? She's dying, Miss Brockman. She's been dying for some time. The only difference now is that death begins to have clearly defined lines, and you discover that it knows your name. Is that the answer you were looking for? Just concerned, Doctor. I was thinking tomorrow after your visit, maybe we could go out for a drink. Does this mean you won't be coming by tomorrow? In case your aunt didn't tell you, I inherited this family from my father, who got it from his, and that carries a certain obligation. A word you may not be familiar with. So, yes. I'll be here tomorrow. The only question is whether Selena will still be with us. Dr. Burrell? Selena won't die tonight. She'll hold on as long as she has to. Come in. Your coach awaits, madame. Okay, let me just do one last check. Are you sure about all this? It's a long way to go on the basis of a telephone conversation. She's my aunt. They say she needs me. But you never even met her. No. But I've heard about her. My dad used to talk about her in this sort of whispery tone of voice that he usually saved for anything that was unusual or exotic or just plain different. She sounds weird. She's dying. Any talk of an inheritance? <laughs> Susan! Well? Some, depending on my going down there and helping out. But I'm really just more curious than anything else. Okay, that's it. Last chance. Suze, I spent my whole life within walking distance of this place. I think I'm entitled to a little adventure, don't you? Okay. <laughs> You'll have free run of the house. If you want to find anything, just ask. This is Orville. He's our sort of combination handyman and village idiot. Oh, relax. He's quite deaf. All you have to do is turn away when you talk. You can say anything you like. Isn't that right, Orville? Who's that? My mother. She's quite harmless. I don't even think she knows we're here. I'm told there's a family resemblance. You'll just have a minute. I'm giving her something to help her sleep.
it's Deborah. Deborah Brockman, you sent for me. I'll be helping to look after you, so if you need anything at all, day or night. She realized how hard she was squeezing. Is she as ill as they say? Well, worse, but she hangs on. She's a strong woman. Well, I'm not sure I would call it strength. It's more like a, a desperate clutching for life. It's as if, as if she's waiting for something. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so morbid. Oh, that's all right. This place will do it to anyone. Well, for what it's worth, good luck. I hope you won't need it. See you tomorrow. Just a spot. Still. I didn't want to mention it in front of Aunt Selena. No, that's good. You can't be too careful. Though in this case, it's curious but harmless. It's a liver spot. A liver spot? Well, it's uncommon in someone as young as you. But it's completely benign. You probably got it from too much sun. How could it appear so suddenly? Well, probably the skin's been darkening by degrees for some time and only now become noticeable. Since there's only one of them, good bleaching cream two or three times a day will do it. Just stop hanging out on the beach. Doctor! If you're quite finished, your real patient would like to see you now. Yes, well, if her condition has progressed as I expect, I'm surprised she can still see anyone. Good afternoon, Doctor. And isn't it a perfectly splendid day? Well? Pulse is stronger. Heartbeat seems to have stabilized a little. You sound surprised. Well, frankly, I am. When I came through the door, I expected to find... A corpse? I wouldn't have put it that indelicately. Perhaps you're a better physician than you give yourself credit for. No. I'm good. I'm not that good. Aunt Selina has a very powerful will to live, Doctor. Yes. So it seems. Now, I don't want you overexerting yourself. This could be a temporary remission. You don't want to cause a relapse. Oh, I'll be very careful, Doctor. Thanks, Armin. I'll see you tomorrow. Are you feeling all right, Debbie? Oh, I think so. I'm just, just a little tired, that's all. Probably need something to eat. Why don't you go lie down? I'll bring you something in a little while. Thank you. I, I think I will do that. Yeah. It's Deborah Brockman. I know it's 
sleep, but can you come here? Is it Selena? No, it's me. Please hurry. Why are you sitting here in the dark? I don't know. What's happening to me? It's okay. Everything's gonna be fine. Look at me. I know, I know. I'll get you to the hospital and do some tests. Come on, Jack. I mean, there must be something you can do. What? Look, we've run every test we've got. Blood count, cell structure, you name it, we've put her through it. And we can't find anything wrong with her. You've got eyes, you've seen her. Looks like premature aging to me. I agree. It's a nice label, but until we know what the cause is, that's all Dr. it is. Robin, Look, I'll arrange a CAT scan, see what radiology's got. If I hear anything at all, I'll let you know. Dr. Now go Chen. home and get some sleep. Dr. Chen, OR3. I'm sure this is quite unnecessary, Doctor. Yes, I'll decide that for the time being. Whatever's hit Deborah, I have to know if it's contagious. I've never felt better in my life. Neither has Aunt Selena. And your mother? Oh, she never changes. She just sits up there in her cat bird seat watching the world go by. That's a souvenir from childhood, if you don't mind. My niece is correct. We don't need a doctor. Your interest is appreciated, but as you can see, we're all perfectly well. Oh, yes, I can see that. Well, it's a curious coincidence, isn't it? Deborah's showing signs of premature aging. I said that would be all, Doctor. In fact, I should think that you will no longer be required. Payment for your services will be sent on to your office. Well, what about Deborah? Oh, we'll see to it that she gets all the best care. You needn't concern yourself with it any further. Fine. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll choose what I want to concern myself with. Good day. What is it? The diary? The Brockmans? <gasps> July 17th, 1940. Our picnic was almost ruined by a fire when a horse kicked over a kerosene lantern. Only Martha was burned. The physician says she'll be all right, but we'll have to live with a scar for the rest of her life. It's in the same place as her daughter's scar. Can you get me back in there tonight?
Diane. You're Diane. You're the daughter. What are you doing here? At first, I didn't believe it. I mean, I didn't want to believe it. What are you talking about? I went to the hospital. I did some checking. Diane Brockman has green eyes and no visible scars. The woman sitting in that chair has green eyes. So what color are yours? And where did you get that scar? How old are you really, Martha? Get out. Oh, it's a convenient deal, isn't it? Get out of here. Get out of this house. Not before I talk to Selena. No. Selena? Selena! My God. Selena, he knows. It isn't right, Selena. Give Deborah back her years. You know it isn't right. Not right? What do you know about it? The game is longevity, Doctor. You play at it with your medicines and your stethoscopes, but we won. There's one rule, Doctor. It has nothing to do with morality or love. When illness or death encroach, the trade takes place. That's the way it's always been and the way it always will be. Away from me, Selena, Martha. Well, maybe she'll finally find some peace. Just one missing. Missing? Uh, one of the neighbors said he saw a woman break through a window. Her clothes were on fire. When we got there, she was gone. Hard to figure. That's Diane. Deborah, thank God you're all right. What's happening? Where to begin? I'm not sure that I, uh, thanks, I understand it myself. Did anyone survive? I don't know. We're not sure about Diane. Dr. Chen, OR3. What do you think? She's old, indigent, with massive burns over most of her body and face. I wouldn't hold out too much hope. Best we can do is try to make her last hours as comfortable as possible. Did you notice, though, her left arm seems to be healing quite fast? For all the good, it'll do it. And it's the strangest thing. I mean, it doesn't hurt or anything, but just look at it. I swear I didn't burn myself, but there it is. I've been wondering if it's psychosomatic. Maybe I've been working on the burn ward too long. Dr. Robin, call 23. Jane Doe, age unknown. Sole survivor of a terrible fire, soon to undergo a miraculous recovery. A living warning to those who fail to perceive the distinction that there is a difference between the fear of death and the love of life, especially in the twilight zone.